Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Today I will be talking you through how to make this logo animation from scratch using particles and a little bit of compositing. This should be fun and easy, covering lots of the basic areas a notch, so let's get started. I'll start by importing the logo into the resource window in Notch. I can do this by either dragging the resource into the window from an explorer window, or by right clicking and selecting Import Resource, Image, Image, and selecting it from the Windows Explorer menu. Once it's imported into the resource window, I'll just drag it into the node graph. One thing to note is that this tutorial uses an image with an alpha channel. So if you're following along, make sure you're using an alpha channel too. Currently, it's set to static image. This means they won't update every frame, which is great in some cases, as the image won't contribute to performance after the first frame. But we need the node to update to run our animation, so we'll need to disable this option. An image is just a source though. We need to add an image plane to render the image itself to the screen. I'll add an image plane to the scene, connect it to the root, and connect the image to the video node input. Now we can see the image appear in the viewport, but it's a bit small and stretched. For the size, I could try and frame this up with the perspective camera, but I always find it easier to bring in a camera node instead. I'll connect it to the root node, and then change the position Z until the logo fills a reasonable area of the viewport. To fix the stretching, I'll go into the image plane and set the aspect based scaling mode to scale X. I could do it manually of course, but this way it's automatic, so if I change the image, the image scale will update too. Now we can see our image clearly. For the reveal effect, I want to make an erosion animation on the image play in reverse, and I think creating an animation on the alpha image is a great way to do this. First, I'll add a video null to the scene to create a copy of the image. I'll then connect the logo image we added to the video nulls input and select preview in viewport so I can see the changes I'm making as I go. Next, I'll add a channel boolean and connect it to the video null. With this node, I can switch around the red, green, blue, and alpha channels to output a single or custom mix of those channels. In this case, I only want to use the alpha channel so I can edit it, so I'll select each source and set it to alpha. Now I've extracted the alpha, I'm going to add a fractal noise generator and select preview in viewport. This image is what I'll use to erode the alpha image by. By default, it generates a small image, so I'm going to increase it to match the imported image on both axes. If you don't know this already, you can either check the resource in the resource window or just hover over the node in the node graph. I'll also increase the octaves for a noisier texture and increase the noise scale a bit. Finally, I'll raise the gain to slightly increase the contrast and reduce the animation speed to zero so the noise doesn't animate while I'm trying to use it later. This should work well. Let's combine it with the alpha image. I'll add a composite image node and place it underneath the channel boolean. Remember that Notch uses a hierarchical node graph so we need to make sure that the channel boolean runs first. Now let's connect the fractal noise to the composite image. I'll preview the video null again and set the blend mode to multiply. The fractal noise image will now multiply against the logo image and create a simple erosion shape. This isn't great for what we want though. There's too much of a gradient between the high and low values. To sort this out, let's add a color correction node. This node allows me to control various color channels in a node, but in this case it's great for controlling the dark and bright spots of an image. I'm going to use the in black and in white properties to control the erosion animation, and to save myself time in future, I'm going to add an envelope modifier to control both properties at the same time. Keeping the color correction node selected, I'll drag from the output of the envelope and connect it to the in black property and in white property. Now, when I change the envelope value, both properties change. Lastly, to reduce the gradient between black and white, I'll reduce the white value to 0.01. Now when I use this slider, I can move between complete darkness and complete brightness, with a simple erosion animation in between. 
Now the alpha image is ready, I will disable preview and viewport and add a new video null to the scene. I'll put it between the image plane and the logo image and then connect the image we just created to its alpha image input to combine both my color and alpha channels together. Lastly, for the compositing, let's keyframe the envelope modifier to animate from off to on. Firstly, I'll go to the first frame in the scene and adjust the envelope modifier to be a value where the image is totally dark and add a keyframe with the K button next to the property. Next, I'll move forward to a point at which I want the animation to finish and move the value to a point at which the image is totally white. I don't need to add a keyframe here as Notch uses an auto keyframe by default, which automatically keys frames in time if they already have a keyframe applied to them. But if you don't like this, you can switch it off with the AK button above the viewport. Next, I'll quickly hop over to the curve editor and make sure the key interpolation is set to linear by selecting both keys, right clicking and setting the interpolation to linear. Perfect. Now if I jump back to the start of the timeline and hit play, we can see the logo animate. Now let's add some particles. All particle systems in Notch require a particle root, so I'll start by adding one to the node graph and parenting it to the root. Particle systems also need an emitter node to generate the particles, and because I want to emit my particles from the logo, I'll use an image emitter. I'll add it to the node graph and connect it to the particle root, then connect the image plane to the video node input. This forces the image emitter to use the same surface for emission as the image plane, so the scale and positions will match. Next, I'll add a point renderer and connect it to the particle root too. Now particle systems are pretty dull with stationary particles, so I'm gonna add a turbulence effector. I want the particles to be pushed upwards and to the right, so I'm going to set the mode to directional and rotate the node to push in that direction. I'll also raise the velocity amount to three to push the particles a bit more when they spawn. Now the particles move diagonally with a little bit of randomness, but I want some more dynamic movement, so I'll add a curl noise effector. By default, it pushes the particles pretty hard, so I'll reduce the curl noise amount a bit. Now let's focus on the particle emission again, as there's a lot I want to do here. Firstly, the particles last a little too long in the scene, so I'm going to reduce their lifespan a bit. Next, I want to have far more particles in this scene, so I'm going to jump back to the root and set the maximum to 500,000. Moving back to the emitter, I'll set its max count to the same value, so as many particles are being pushed into the scene as possible. Next, I'll enable limit emissions per pixel and set the emission rate to two. Limit emissions per pixel will force the image emitter to only emit particles a certain number of times for each pixel in the image, while the emission rate will speed up the emission of particles per frame. So as the image begins to grow, only particles from the edges of the erosion will be emit. Finally, the particles fade in too slowly at the start and too quickly at the end, so I'm going to lower both the fade in and fade out times. Jumping back to the point renderer, I think the particles are a bit too large, so I'll halve their size and add some size randomness to make them look more interesting. Nice, and that's the core of the effect, but I'd like to brighten up the particles with a little bit of glow. Post effects can't normally be applied to a single node or node system, so we'll need to separate the particle system into a separate render layer and apply the effect there. I'll start by adding a render layer node and setting it to additive. Then connect the particle node to it instead. Next, I'll add a glow to node and adjust the properties for a nice effect. Something like this seems to work. The background is a bit boring, so let's make a simple gradient to go in there. First, I'll add a gradient generator node, and then I'll add an image 2D and connect them up. The gradient, just like the fractal noise, starts out at a pretty low resolution, so I'll increase it 
this time to 1920 by 1080. Next, I want to use a circular shape for the gradient, so I'll set the mode to radial. By default, it's a bit too narrow, so I'm going to change the outer radius to fill the space and raise the fall off so the blend is a little less linear. Finally, I'm going to set the color to a deep blue to highlight the bright blue icon. Lastly, I'm going to go back to the Image 2D and change the Set as Background property to Render in Background. So the Image 2D is rendered behind the rest of the content in the scene. And that's this effect sorted. From here, you can easily swap out for any other logo or try another effector setup or even try an entirely different way of revealing the logo. But for now, this is good enough for me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.